Welcome to IBC 2022. It's been three long years since the world's most inspiring content and technology event occurred in Amsterdam. And Broadcast is here in Europe to engage with each other, unlock business opportunities, discover the latest innovations, and explore the exciting world of content. Ashley within Broadcast, joining me is Philip of Newsbridge. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. So tell me, where does Newsbridge sit in the media and broadcasting market? So in the media and broadcast market, Newsbridge is here to help customers find the relevant content in less than two seconds. That means that we are working with both customers that have a hundred years of archive, but also maybe a hundred live streams simultaneously. We're helping them to find their content by using our multimodal artificial intelligence indexing technology. So we detect everything that is in the audio, in the picture, that is relevant, meaning that we can detect interviews, we can detect everything that is going to happen there, and uh, everything about sports, about media, about face, about logos, uh, about speech to text. And we compute all of that to make sure that we detect relevant things and we make that available into a very simple search engine so that you don't need to be a PhD to find something relevant. And what AI indexing technology are you seeing out there in the industry? So people know traditional AI technology for maybe two, three or four years. Traditional AI technology is monomodal, meaning that they are looking at maybe faces or pictures or logos or speech to text. The main difference with multimodal is like we are all looking at all those senses at the same time. That means that we are doing what we call data fusion, meaning like let's take this context. A traditional AI will detect the mic, will detect you, the screen, and will, de will detect lots of different tags. But as a journalist working on this interview after the world you would type in the search engine is not a mic, a screen, or you, will, will be interview. Our AI detects everything and do a merge of all the data, which we call that the fusion, to detect, okay, because I've detected all of that, that means it is an interview. And that's a very big difference compared to traditional AI technologies that have been built to detect lots of different stuff, but not to do real indexing and real content indexing. And that's really a key difference. And you've announced some exciting fundraising news here at IBC. Can you tell me some more about that? Yeah, so fundraising was, uh, was closed very early from, it was maybe one week ago. So uh, fundraising and we raising money for several different axes. First one is to keep investing in our research and development to still have the best AI indexing technology, to have the most possibilities in terms of detecting complex scenes and complex concepts that are complex for the machine but seem simple for the human. So that content will be more searchable than ever. Then there's some important insight about how AI is working and how we will change the way that today AI needs a lot of power to compute. compute computer vision needs a lot of power to be able to detect frames and faces and everything. And our target within the next two years is to decrease that by 90% so that we can make sure that AI indexing is no business reality for all our customers that have big archives or a lot of content. So this is really about research and development. And then, of course, there's something very important and we are proud of that we are about to open our first U.S. office uh, in New York. And there's a U.S. expansion and we are hiring top talent in the East Coast to expand there and meet customers on DeFi or go to market in the US. Good. And what will Newsbridge be uh, showcasing here in the next coming months? So in the next coming months, we'll showcase uh, what we call the multimodal rules. Multimodal rules is a way for the users to train the machine and uh, for a simple user, not an engineer or someone that is very technical, it would be possible to teach how to detect very complex scene, how the machine should work. And this is really, today, people that are doing manual tagging will be able to say, okay, I'm doing manual tagging now. I will tell the machine how to do that. And I will train the machine and so that I can, can focus on media environment to work on, investi on an investigation, to work on high, high value task instead of manual logging. It's really something that is important for us so that when we're speaking about hundreds of petabytes of archive, it will be doable to find what's relevant in the archive using AI, having documentalists, archiving journalists working on teaching AI with very, very simple interface. So that's something that is very important for us. And the other thing is 
about carbon footprint. So we discussed just before about reducing energy, reducing the amount of energy needed to do um, visual processing. And of course, when you need less energy to compute data, that means you're also reducing carbon footprint. And when you know that right on us are piling up their content and never delete that, that means that their carbon footprint will increase also. So our goal on what we propose in the future will be to decrease the amount of energy they need to store data, but also to analyze data. So this is really something we've committed on, and it, it will be available very soon to different layout, and uh, we'll speak about that later on. Right. And so that's in the near future, but what else could we possibly expect from the company in the near or far future? So the company was explained to the U.S. defining a new go-to market. And, um, about storage system, we know that it's very important for our customer to be able to store data even if it's still on-prem. So we are a cloud-native company, we are deploying cloud-native system, but we know that for some customers that have hundreds of petabytes of archive, like build right on us, and especially in the US, it is necessary and it's mandatory to be able to work on on-prem system to avoid moving this high volume of data to the cloud. It's, of course, a lot of energy, a lot of power. So for us, it's sustainable to be sure that traditional infrastructure that like LTO can be compliant and imported into our system while staying where it is on-prem. So it's all about sobriety and sustainability in how we design workflows and how we are computing customer data. Well, that was very, very informative, and thank you so much for sharing that with us today, and it's great seeing you at the show. Thank you. Thank you.